Good morning, everyone, and happy fall. This morning, I woke up and I was so excited because it's supposed to be really the first very overcast day, as you can tell, uh, with a little bit of some rain. And we have had quite a hot spell of a summer, so this feels amazing. So I jumped out of bed, got into my closet, found my favorite cozy, cozy, cozy sweater, put it on, and said, hey, let's go ahead and film a fall feeding routine. I personally love watching what other people do these. I think it's fun to see what everyone's routine is. Um, and I also really enjoy looking back on them in the future to see all these different chapters um, of my time caring for and being with our animals. So if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Sabrina and you are joining me at our family ranch called the Damn Happy Ranch in northeastern Wyoming. We have three horses, 10 chickens, two goats, uh, two dogs, one cat, and we also operate a full-time dog boarding business. But this morning, you're gonna come along with me as I feed all of the animals. You'll see how I feed them and what I feed them, and I hope that you guys enjoy. So let's go ahead and feed these hungry eyes that are staring me down right now. Gunner! <laughs> there he goes. Good morning, Guns. How are you? How are you this morning, huh? Good morning. Hi. Are you ready? Are you ready for breakfast? I'm gonna eat my camera. Hi. All right, let's go get breakfast. What are you doing? He has a cacti. Oh my God, he has a cacti on his cheek. Okay, we gotta fix that. <laughs> Good morning, Rambo! Are you so excited? <laughs> okay, you gotta sit. Wait. Rambo! <laughs> okay. Sit. is to feed Karamo because he wakes up very hungry, as do all the other animals, especially the chickens that you can probably hear are yelling at me right now. So let's get him fed. always add a little bit of some water to his food. Yes, I know that's yours because it helps him stay hydrated, um, but also he tends to eat it more if there's water in it and he thinks it's like a gravy, um, which is kind of funny. <laughs> too loud in here because I hear the rain starting. We have our crazy girls begging for some food. This is what they do every morning. They jump up here on their perch and they walk around and they scream at me. <sighs> yeah, I hear ya. I hear ya, girls. Everyone's getting crazy. <laughs> So usually one of the first things I do when I get into the barn is prepare Gunner's alfalfa pellets and alfalfa cubes because I really want them to soak and break down uh, before I'm done with the whole feeding routine so I can feed him them. So here is his pan and I actually feed him a combination of alfalfa pellets and cubes and so I usually do about I do about this much of 
alfalfa pellets, put them in there, and then I go over to the alfalfa cubes, which are in here. If you guys have never fed alfalfa cubes before, this is what they look like. And if you notice, they kind of have these like little breaks in them. So I like to take my fingers and break apart the big alfalfa cube into smaller pieces because you have to soak these guys for like, usually up to an hour, sometimes two hours to get them fully broken down so they're in a, um, a safe like size and texture for your horse to eat without choking. Because if you just give your horse these plain uh, without soaking them in water for at least one to two hours, um, they're too large and your horse can easily choke on them. So always soak the alfalfa pellets and sometimes they're really hard to break apart like this one. So I'm just gonna toss it in, let it soak in the water. And um, yeah, so I really love feeding my horses alfalfa in general, but uh, sometimes when you lack a lot of storage space um, or if maybe alfalfa is hard to find or good hay is hard to find, then you can substitute some of your horse's forage diet with alfalfa pellets or cubes. And I find that that really works well to keep, especially senior horses, at a really good weight and they love alfalfa. Of course, it's very nutrient dense and they just are obsessed with it. So I put a couple of those in there and then this is what it looks like. So let's go soak it in water. I'm being yelled at by Gunner, and this always happens. He will stand out here and just go <laughs> and go. <laughs> what are you doing? I also think he has a tiny piece of a cacti on his cheek. Gunner, let me see that. Come here, Gunner. Come here, Gunner. Why are you looking that way? Okay, do you have a tiny piece of cacti? Oh, you do. Hey, Mama's gonna get it. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Wait a second. Ooh. Okay. I have to go down here to Gemini and slide. Gemini is on the left, slide's on the right. Hi Bramble, hi Theo. These are so cute. So then we come on down. If you guys are wondering what's going on with slide, this poor horse has been through a lot this last month. But he basically injured his right hind leg and um, he's being treated by a vet and everything, but my goodness, poor guy. So we're gonna go over here and get both of the hay nets so I can fill them up with breakfast. So we got this one. Usually I just make a pile over here. Hi, Jammers. Good morning, honey. And then I gotta get this other one. Yes, Gunner, I know I still have to feed you. So now we're gonna start filling up the hay bags, uh, or the hay nets, whatever you wanna call them. And these two massive bales are orchard grass, mixed with a little bit of some alfalfa. So I'm gonna pull down a big plate. And I like to pull apart at the big plates because they're pretty condensed. And if you feed them to your horse really condensed, it can be really hard for them to, you know, kind of eat it out of the hay bag. So I like to break it up just a little bit before I put it in the hay bag. You can pull it out easier as they're eating. So I'm gonna fill up this one about maybe one third with the orchard grass alfalfa mix here. And then I'm gonna go over to the um, alfalfa grass mix over there because I'm feeding my horses um, off of two different types of hay uh, because this hay is a little bit older and I want to use it up and then also I'm trying to introduce them to the newer hay that I got over there a few months ago. So that's about pretty good for now and now I'm going to go over there. Bramo likes to sit right where I am. You got a bone? He's so happy he has a bone. Hey, I need to go right where you are. This is his bed, um, but when I'm not in here, this is where he sleeps. So he's like, okay, lady, why are you walking on my bed? All right, Rodney, let's go. Come on, move it, move it. Good boy. All right. 
So let's go ahead and fill up the rest of this hay bag with all of this hay. You guys can tell that this hay is like newer too because it's a lot brighter. Also because it contains more alfalfa than the other bales that you guys saw over there. I really, really love feeding my horses out of these hay bags because of multiple reasons. The first is that it forces them to eat slower and kind of forage their food like they naturally should be eating where they're eating slower um, and also eating smaller amounts of food instead of just gorging down on one huge pile of hay. Also, it's super windy here in Wyoming. We are like the uh, windiest state out of them all. So if you don't put your hay in hay bags, what happens is it usually flies away unless you're feeding indoors. And I learned that the hard way like the first month that we lived here, so I had to buy some more hay bags. And um, it also really just keeps the horses occupied over time because they're gonna, you know, take their time eating and eat slower when they're eating out of these. So I love hay bags. I don't always feed them every single meal out of a hay bag because some people are concerned that hay bags force them to put their necks and kind of their heads at a, a natural position for how a horse should eat. Um, so, you know, I don't always, like every single meal, feed them out of a hay bag. Sometimes I feed them in their shelter. But most of the time, I do try to stick with the hay bag because it does work really well. So, usually, I fill it up to the top and then, of course, I always weigh it to ensure that my horse is getting the a right amount of feed per meal. So let's go weigh this. So this is my handy dandy little scale that I bought off of Amazon. I think it was about like $25 and I always like to weigh my horse's hay to make sure they're getting the right amount. So I'm gonna turn it on, put the hay bag on the hook and we're gonna see how much it weighs. So I need to add about 0.7 more uh, pounds of hay in here and then I can feed it. Also, I want to show you guys a really good tip for if you feed out of hay nets like I do. So here's just like your traditional hay net. Uh, the other one I was using is like a little bit fancier. This is just like a traditional hay net. What you can do to make opening it up easier to put the hay inside is get yourself a round, large bucket like this. And what you do is you put the hay net in there and then Kind of hard to do this sideways, but you um, open it up like you would to put hay in it, and then you take the edges and pull them over the bucket, and then it opens it up for you. So when you put the hay in there, you can easily just put it in here, and then when you're done, you can you know tie it up or um, put a carabiner to close it. So this works really well for filling up the hay nets. secure than doing it the other way. So I just take the carabiner here, open it up, and loop all those top strands through the carabiner, clasp it close, and ta-da! It's a lot easier than using those silly ropes that they give you to tie them off with.
the nuggets are fed. We got that nugget fed, that nugget fed, and also that one over there. So now it's time for me to go inside and um, check on Gunner's alfalfa pellets and alfalfa cubes that are soaking and also get Slide over here his oats. So let's go do that. Slide gets very aggressive with his hay net. He likes to like attack it and rob it and pull it and toss it and He's very upset with the idea of the hay net, but it is necessary because all of the hay will just fly away if it's not in there. Sorry, slide. Well, hear me out. Now it's time to feed Bramble and Theo, our two goats. And we have a lot of things that naturally grow here on our property that they can eat. So with trying to save money and be conservative about how much feed I'm feeding them, uh, I like to pull some tumbleweeds because goats can eat tumbleweeds and they love them. Uh, horses can't. So usually what I do is I try to grab at least a few of these weeds up from the ground um, and they're going to eat these tumbleweeds for their breakfast along with some hay I already have in here. So that's what I like to do when I have the time to do it. And the ground's kind of hard so some of these are hard to pull up but I try my hardest. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna put a little bit in here. Oh my goodness! And then we're gonna put the rest over there. So I'm gonna grab their water from yesterday, clean it out, and give them some fresh water. Are you helping, Ramo? And I always check water troughs. Ramo helps me check them. <laughs> And it looks like Gunner's trough is about halfway full, so that will be good for the rest of the day. And then we're going to go down and check Gemini and slides. Are you helping, Rommel? Okay, and their trough looks pretty good, too. Some other little things I do is I also put down the outdoor little chicken coop extension thing. So in the future, I'd like to build something a lot bigger than this, but it works for now. We have a lot of predators out here in northeastern Wyoming. So, this just allows them to get a little bit of some outdoor time and some vitamin D when they want to come out and explore for a little bit. But in the future, I want to make them something a lot bigger than that. before I'm going to head inside and get myself some breakfast and some more coffee is to do a quick cleanup of the horse's dry lot and get some of the manure out of there. I try to do at least one to two wheelbarrows a day because it's a pet peeve of mine. If you've ever been to barns 
um, stables or whatever who do not have like good manure management or just good pasture management practices. My goal is to keep them looking nice and clean for the horses and also for the neighbors and anyone else who drives by because it looks really nice when it's clean. <laughs> Now their entire dry lot is completely free of manure and it looks really nice. If I do say so myself.